Coming up on today's Airborne, a UAV in St. Louis impacts a building, Google strikes out, and jetpacks are off the table. And renowned NASA research pilot William H. Dana has gone west. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. A DJI Phantom II quadcopter impacted the tallest building in St. Louis on Monday, and the operator is nowhere to be found. The aircraft hit the side of the Metropolitan Square building and it came to rest on a 30th floor balcony. There was no indication as to the purpose of the flight, and authorities didn't say whether the camera was operating when the aircraft hit the building or if any video was recorded. Because of the mystery, it's not known if this was a commercial use of the UAV. In the meantime, UAV operators continue to make a case for legitimate use of this new technology, but the FAA reacts with harassments and fines rather than a logical approach to a regulatory solution. Now, this one bad apple can make it tougher for everyone else. As most of us already know, Google is far more than a mega internet search giant. Their Google X laboratory researches hundreds of product ideas every year. Apparently, one of many products on the table was a jetpack. We guess it's something like we would have seen on the Jetsons, or perhaps something occasionally demonstrated at special events. The head of the Google X laboratory, Astro Teller, claims that Google had considered producing a jetpack that, quote, wasn't a death trap. However, part of the Google X laboratory mandate is to produce something practical, and the jetpack apparently didn't pass muster. Google founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin said, quote, we focus more on not letting things get fully birthed that don't make sense, end quote. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news-by at aero-news.net. One of the nation's most respected aerospace pioneers has passed away. Distinguished research pilot and aeronautical engineer William Harvey Dana died on May 6th of 2014. Following four years in the Air Force, Dana was hired as an aeronautical research engineer at the NASA High Speed Flight Station in 1958. That was the very same day that NASA was established. His first assignment included development of a rudimentary performance simulator for the X-15 rocket plane. In September of 1959, he transferred to the center's flight operations branch as a research pilot. Over the next three decades, he conducted flight experiments in a wide variety of aircraft, including the rocket-powered X-15 and the wingless lifting bodies. Dana flew to the edge of space in the X-15, attaining a maximum speed of 5.53 Mach. That's almost 4,000 miles per hour and a maximum altitude of nearly 59 miles. They didn't call them astronauts in those days. They called them rocket pilots and William H. Dana was one of the best. Each week, we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. My partner, Byron Lichtenberg, and I carefully suspended him into zero G. Once he was there, let him go to experience what weightlessness was truly like. Jim Campbell's soon-to-be-released book, Beyond the Blue, includes the story of Professor Stephen Hawking's trip into weightless flight. This video of that event is presented by Peter Diamandis, the man that made it happen. Search Peter Diamandis Stephen Hawking on YouTube. 
The Lockheed Martin's F-35 Lightning II continues to prove its dependability as it surpassed 16,000 cumulative program flight hours. In April, it flew a monthly high record for system development and demonstration with 282 flight hours and 153 flights. In April, operational F-35s fleet-wide flew 812 hours. In 2014 through April, F-35A test aircraft flew 420 hours. F-35B test aircraft flew 281 hours and F-35C test aircraft flew 222 hours. Operational F-35s of all three variants flew 2,790 hours for the year. Among the record SDD flights, the F-35B version completed its 700th vertical takeoff and landing sortie, and it began crosswind landings and expeditionary operations. Expeditionary operations refers to the capability to function in austere conditions and non-airport situations. The F-35 is proving to be a reliable and flexible weapons platform for the Air Force and the Navy. Airborne is brought to you by some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. We'll be right back with more news. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States. But you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Rebuilding the sport aviation world one aviator at a time. That's ANN's new Aerosports ebook series, your resource guide to the ultimate in aviation adventures. Aerosport will feature the straight skinny on learning and enjoying 16 unique aviation sports, from ultralights and ballooning to aerobatics, gyroplanes and hang gliders to parachuting, home builds and general aviation to RC models. All this and more will be coming soon with the new updatable Aerosport guide for your favorite electronic devices. Get your advance order in now at www. Aero-sport.net. EAA AirVenture has to be the best place in the world to see unusual and rare aircraft. And here's just another example. One of the earliest transport and cargo planes, the Fairchild 71, will make its first visit to EAA AirVenture in 2014. It's thought to be one of three remaining 71s in the world and will be piloted by David Williams. Gary Coonan of Bell Buckle, Tennessee, said he stumbled on the lumbering airplane while visiting the historic Aircraft Restoration Museum in Missouri. Coonan said, quote, Something attracted me to the wicker seats. I imagine people jumping in there and just flying somewhere. Today, we can't even leave the house without making sure our phone is charged, end quote. The airplane was purchased originally by Pan Am, flying from Florida to Cuba, as well as Texas to New Mexico for five years. It's been restored to its original Pan Am paint scheme. EAA is inviting all members and attendees to join in paying tribute to the memory of its founder, Paul H. Povarezny, during several special commemorative activities at EAA AirVenture 2014. Paul passed away last August at the age of 91, and EAA says it continues to feel his presence daily as planning proceeds for the 62nd annual gathering that he created. Reminders of Paul's profound impact on not only the EAA, but all of aviation, will be prevalent throughout the week. The EAA Welcome Center is hosting a special tribute area that tells Paul's story in his own words. Numerous aircraft associated with Paul will be displayed prominently along with his personal chopped Volkswagen Red One. Monday evening's program at Theater in the Woods will be a special night of storytelling and celebrating Paul's life that you won't want to miss. Other activities will be announced as they're confirmed, and ANN, as always, will keep you up to date. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.